You are going for a job interview. What do you do? How do you act? How do you pay attention to your body language? You'll get the most out of that interview you possibly can. What is that person thinking? What do you want them to feel about you when you leave? That's what we're going to talk about. Greg? Yeah, I, I don't think there's anything more to say about it than that because we've had lots and lots of people ask us, what do you do when you go into a job interview that makes you believable? And so from my angle, the very first thing is forget all those myths. Forget all those myths. Raise your chin. Look at the person. Pay close attention. Keep eye contact. Don't overdo eye contact. Look away when you have to. Look back when you don't. Take your elbows away from your sides because even though this is a myth, you, everybody doesn't know it's a myth and you will look like you're closing someone out. So eye contact and eliminating that other myth about crossing your arms in my first two. Chase, what do you got? Yeah, so I would, I would just write down two things. Excitement and outcomes. So always treat any kind of nervousness in your body as being excited. If you're excited about something, it's the exact same physiological process as being nervous. The same thing happens. Your heart rate increases and all that. So we need to reframe, never use the word nervous again. Say, I'm excited because it's exactly the same. And if you're excited during a job interview, you come across so much more comfortable. And then we get to outcomes Always talk about the outcomes that that person is looking for in that candidate because you want them to be thinking about the perfect outcome while they're looking at you. Scott? All right. One thing I would suggest, if someone's coming into the room, you're already waiting on them, and the person's just coming in. If you're going to get up and introduce yourself, try this, because they did a big study, I believe it was at uh, IBM, where the person sitting down, uh, when the interviewer came in, they stood up and they fixed their jacket or they adjusted themselves really quickly. And then they began the interview. Also, but when they come in, not just adjust, but kind of get some stuff off of your jacket or your dress or your shirt, whatever it is. That'll let that person know that you care about how you look to that person. When you talk to them, don't talk as fast as I talk. Think about what you're going to talk about before you get in there. So you'll be able to talk at a slow pace and get your point across. As you look at them, don't stare at them so it gets weird. Don't like burn a hole in them. But look at them and, and be at ease and have that that little resting face, it's a, a nice little, it's not a big yeah. smile, so you look weird. Put a nice little expression on your face so you look uh, normal, fairly normal anyway. Can I add to that? Yeah. Really quick. So if you have rehearsed a bunch of stuff, what I would highly recommend, if you're thinking about going through a lot of this stuff, like Scott said, you do it in bullet points and yes. not an exact script because if you have a script your brain's going to try to default to it every time so try bullet points instead so guys and the other thing is let's keep this going as long as you have ideas just because we go we can just keep rotating yeah. around because yeah. there's still a lot to cover in this okay thing. let me throw this in the interview starts before you've entered the room it's when you show up in the car park it's when you sure. enter the foyer there everybody is potentially watching you so you want to be calm assertive polite presentable, you know, a delight to be around all the way through. Let me give you one other hint about this as well. In most Western cultures, or certainly Western business cultures, there's going to be a handshake involved somewhere along the way, right. and people often worry about that handshake piece. Let me give you my ideas on how to do a great handshake, <coughs> especially at an interview. I would give the other person the upper hand which means they get to put their hand on top of mine. What I don't want to do is make sure I take the upper hand mm -hmm. on them because Chase, I can see in his eyes there, is already going, I hate this guy, I yeah. hate this guy. It's, yep. it's already yep. there, isn't it? But when I give him the upper yep. hand, it feels good. He's got advantage over my hand. He's got gravity on his side. The other thing I'm going to do is step into it slightly so he has easy access into the vulnerable part of my body. What I'm trying to do is make Chase feel confident make my interviewer feel confident because their feeling of confidence will be projected onto me they'll be confident in me and you know mark the one thing i would say is something you just did there is important yeah you did not step in straight to it no. this way because that's confrontation yeah and that confrontation will make the person uncomfortable on a level and they won't understand why but it's not good for you yeah and one thing you said it begins in the in the parking lot one thing that I would advise, if you're going to a job interview or anything, is think about the difference between performing and connecting. And those two yep. mindsets, yep. instead of this job interview is some uh, like a costume that I'm putting on for this, 
how can I become the type of person and just live that life off camera? Nobody's looking up to the weeks before this job interview. I'm still that person so that when I'm in that room, I'm connecting instead of performing. So, All right, let me add, let me add to that. Yeah. There's a thing called the instantaneous impression study. Go look that up. Throw it in the goo. Because that talks about, in other words, how you need to have a, a good resting face, a pleasant resting face. What Mark's talking about when you're in the parking lot, when you show up, you don't think anybody's watching you. They could be watching you from the window. They could be getting out of their car at the same time you are, and you don't know the. this could be the person you're meeting with. So you need to have a pleasant look on your face because that first six to nine seconds that they meet you or see you before they meet you, that's when their brain makes up a decision about whether they're going to like you or not or how much they're going to like you or not. So it's important, practice it in the mirror. Look in there and get a, pre a pleasant little look on your face. Not Again, not so you look like you're crazy, but so you look pleasant, like somebody you want to hang around with. And keep that on. When you're at the water fountain, do that. When you're sitting there in the waiting room, do that. Have a pleasant look on your face. Yeah, the thing I would like to bring up and for us to discuss, look, I've, I've done hundreds of job interviews, quite literally. I was a corporate guy forever. And one of the systems I use is something called targeted selection. It's used all around America, outside of America, and there are other versions of it, too, where they say, Tell me about one time when you did X. That is a trap. That is a very deadly trap for most people because they, if they're not prepared for that, they suddenly go into fight or flight and they go, I don't know how to do this. Let me give you a couple of things. Nobody is so insidious as to try to trap you. They're trying to find out whether you have the capability to do what they need you to do. So the first thing is get control. Chase, you called it turning nervous into energy or into excitement. Take control of that fight or flight. Curl your toes in your shoes. Do something under the table so that you're controlling the thinking brain and bringing it back online. And then think about what is it possibly they're trying to reach for with this question. And if you don't have an example, just take a few questions, a few sentences, a few words, and sidestep and make it about the topic, not about the exact activity. And say, the closest I have to that is... Just practice saying the closest I have to that is, it's a stalling technique that we tell you we see in people who are lying all the time, but it's also a stalling technique in people who publicly speak. It'll give you a chance to think and to reframe the question. Let me add to that because you, with that, you know, the closest I get to that is you're going to have like a, a, a who or a what or a when. You're yep. going to have one of those W answers, which are going to be fact-based, we would hope, and they're going to be things that happened. What you want to do is then turn those things that happened into values, into what was most valuable about that. What was the outcome of that? And then if you want to go to an even higher level, you take that value into what that says about you as a person. So I may have worked in this division at this time. What was most valuable about that is that I finished all those projects on time, on budget. And what that says about me is I'm somebody who is really dedicated to getting the work done in a way that's most helpful for the organization. So really, I'm doing the work for the interviewer, turning the things that I've done into values and turning them into an understanding of who I am as a human like being. In that situation, I learned X, which changed the way that I Y right. forever. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Another thing is, when you before you answer these questions you've, pre you've prepared for, like the one uh, Greg was talking about, and the same thing we're all talking about, when they ask you something, don't just go, blah, and let it come out real quick. Act like you're thinking about it for a second. Just pause for a second, and then, because who wants an answer? I mean, if they ask you what time it is, tell them what time it is. Don't go, <laughs> well, you know, it's almost 4.30. Tell them what time it is. But if, if it's not, if it's something that's important, just pause for a second like you're thinking about it because it lets them think you're, that you weren't prepared for that question. You've thought about it, and dang, here it comes. So, Well, the last thing to remember in terms of that for me is if Chase is going to take the time to interview me, I have value already based on something he's seen, she's seen, whatever the person's talking about, they've made time for you in their calendar. So you have value to them and go in with that mindset that I have value. If you go in the mindset, well, there's no way they're going to hire me, then you project that and you're looking for negativity and that negativity leaks out of you. That's my opinion. Let me add one more thing around nonverbal communication. In fact, what I'm going to do is go and grab a chair. Hold, hold the stage for me for a moment while right. I go grab uh, this chair here, which is probably a little bit, little bit high, but it'll, it'll make the point, I think, is that what we tend to do when we sit down at an interview is get really close 
close to the yes. furniture, yep. you know, and, and we'll probably want to touch the furniture. Some of us might hang on to the furniture like it's a, a fairground ride from of death. What I want you to do is think about being your, your stomach area, your navel being a hand span away from the edge of the table. That means the interviewer can see more of you. Uh, when insufficient data, we default to negative. So if I hide myself behind the table, they're going to default to negative ideas about me. I want positive ideas around me. So I'm just trying to show them more so I can give these truth plain gestures, open palm gestures at navel height away from the table and they can see me. They're going to trust me more. I'll stay sitting while I'm... <laughs> I got one last thing. One last thing to remember is a job interview is a two-way street. When you're interviewing for a job, you're not just interviewing for you trying to persuade them to give you the job. You're also listening to see if you really want to work there. That's the key to remember. And so you need to ask good questions. When they're at the end, don't try to come up with a, hey, I'm the most brilliant guy on earth. Ask something you really care about because it, you might find out that the job that you're interviewing for would be a living hell when you got there. <laughs> That's all I got. Lovely. All right. That's it.